is a bit of an outlier paper because it's an, it's an ordinary regular paper and not actually for the special issue. Uh, and yeah, you've already seen this. It's uh, our group and Betty Hanning and Eva Maria Termlod, they are part of it. And it's the research group that I, that I lead. And so this is the, the um, title of the paper. Lessons from a preschool intervention study carried out during the COVID-19 pandemic. And it centers around an early math play and learn game uh, built on the pedagogy learning by teaching. So this is a teachable agent based play and learn game. And it's not only the game, it is the game together with resources for teachers that were developed also during this project. So some of them are, you know, very closely related to the children's game use, the follow up support. You can see some of it here. Uh, here you can see actually what you see, you see the colors, you can see the areas where the kids struggle. And if you find that, you can also get get um, tips about what you can do, activities to support particularly these kinds of skills that they struggle with. This is more detailed than for an uh, individual player. And also there's a lot of other kinds of resources, like brief lectures in the format of films and text material to educate the teachers, the preschool teachers on early math. And uh, so, and yeah, this is also a part of that. Now, the research questions that we had, they were, can use of this game support the development of basic math skills to a larger extent than ordinary preschool practice? The first one, and then, can the use of the game together with the supplementary support for teachers support the development of basic skills better than ordinary preschool practice? That means business as usual when it comes to early math. And I think I'll skip the secondary research question here. You can read about that in the article if you want. Uh, now, so what, why is this important at all? Early math is a particular field one could say. First of all, it's important to understand that it's not something that will just develop spontaneously. It's really necessary to support children. However, if this is not done, it's very hard to take part and make progress of math when you encounter it in school. So how well you accomplish the, the pre the, this early math is correlated it's not so strange that it's correlated to the how whether you can make progress in math, but it's also correlated to school success in general. That is, it is important. And there's also an overarching motive for us and many others who work in this particular field, and that is, you know, education is compensatory because it will develop for ki kids from high resource environments because they tend to get the support they need in their home environments. But this is why. I mean, this is one of the things that drive us when we work with this. And uh, yeah, it's also very well established that these early interventions for preschool kids, they have an effect. They matter. So you can actually, by doing this, you can go from, from this, where you see school start here, but unfortunately kids who are not, they're not prepared to, to, they can't profit from what, what you get at school. But we can, by intervening early with the preschool kids, you can move from this unfortunate picture to this one. So what we did here now in order, you know, we wanted to, 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 to really test, does it help then to have this, to, to use this, this game? And is it important that we also bring resources to the teacher or doesn't that matter? So we did set this up, you know, standard set up uh, those conditions and a control a business as usual. And we had more than 400 kids and we set this up uh, as a, a standard comparative intervention study. 
We also have some guiding principles for the project, and we write pretty much about those also in the article. Of course, we the first one is a standard one. We want to accumulate new knowledge, in particular, well, on how to improve preschool math instruction to promote learning and with a focus then from children from low SS backgrounds. Also important, the collaboration, the participatory, dis participatory design aspect. Uh, for all, you know, we spent very much time on designing the resources for teachers, the follow up support, everything. And that was done in a very close collaborative setup where we could prof profit a lot, utilize their expertise with respect to preschool practice and the practice of being a preschool teacher. So we write a lot about the, uh, of, uh, write a lot about this in the paper. Then we have the guiding principle of combining experimental control because this was set up as you know systematic, well-controlled empirical intervention study, but important to combine this with high ecological validity and practice orientation because we wanted to deepen our understanding of everyday preschool practice, what is possible to realize within these frames. Connected to the fourth uh, bullet point here, real world applicability. So this means we wanted to investigate whether and how this intervention could stand on their own and live on after the end of the project, which means of course that they have to be possible to implement by professionals uh, without support of researchers. So this, uh, this is our intentions. And again, yeah, we had these three conditions uh, in our original plans. We had a whole battery of pre-tests and uh, post-tests. And then COVID-19 came. Uh, and, and the thing is here that that, that pre-post set up it was based on having a number of trained research assistants. We had 400 kids. We were going to you know, conduct all this on site. And then we landed here when we were definitely not allowed. Nobody was allowed on the, on the preschool grounds. However, the activities in preschool in Sweden continued pretty much as before, but, but no external people were allowed. Only the preschool teachers and the kids. So how should we do this? I mean, how should we gain knowledge about the initial status of the children in those three conditions? We could not visit the preschools. We could not do the, the pre-test, the screening in mathematics. Where were they when we started? We, how, how would we you know, get that knowledge, that data? And how would we measure learning when we no longer could enter the preschools to conduct any kinds of tests. And I think, yeah, the seemingly insurmountable challenges, which is what we call it in the paper. And this was what we felt. So and some in the team actually said, well, I think we just have to say that we have to, you know, quit this project. We will give the money back to the funders. And because how should we do this? Uh, and yeah, so the, paper is pretty much about how we nevertheless did this and i don't think i'm really so much going to go into details here but basically we we, we found out you know as uh, we have we had actually because we had log data we logged the, the kids game activities so i mean yes we we knew that we could have a proxy for the initial status of the kids in the intervention conditions because and this is fortunate how well you do during the nine first rounds of the game, we, we knew from previous studies that that correlates somehow with scores from number sense screener. The problem was, of course, we didn't have that. We would not have that for the control group because they were not supposed to use the game. So we had to modify the instructions so that also the control groups could use the game or they should use the game. The kids used it twice, 20 minutes, twice at the beginning of the intervention period. So we had comparable data, which was extremely important. But otherwise, we would not have been able to do what we did. So, so we did that. We had comparable initial data for the three conditions. 
And then, yeah, we had a learning measure, an in-game measure, of course, because we had game measurements. And we could look a lot on comparing the two conditions, the one where we only had the game and the one where also the teachers had support by, you know, looking at the, how many kids would just quit, quit, not continue or slow progress, very slow progress or things like that. But we had nothing for the control then. And also you don't want only an in-game internal measurement. You want transfer, you want to have an external. And this is where this came then, the Anibanani meth test, which originally was one of the two planned pre-post math that we would have been doing with all kids on site with research assistants. And we, we, we write a lot about how we manage, you know, to screening, use screening data to filter and have a, a selection of kids and having help training preschool teachers, everything remotely, and then how they helped out doing this. And we reason also about why we think it, it's very high validity data, uh, very much, I mean, everything supports that, even though, first of all, it was like, oh no, can we really trust this? So actually what we also do then, these are the principles, we get back to these, also talk about that in our paper, to what degree were we able to follow these? How did the fact that we had to refrain from on-site activities, how did that affect our ability to stick to these principles? And you can read about that in the paper, find out also how we managed to carry out this Orient this study under circumstances that were so different from those expected when we planned the study. And we learned a lot about what can be done, what is difficult and what is impossible to do remotely. And I think that is maybe the main take, what do we say, take away from the article. And let me just finally say that, you know, I have seldom been so proud of being able to conduct a study as this time. And again, thank you to Educational Technology Group. Have you considered that uh, um, you developed a game for this target group? Instead of um, making the game, doing activities for them, creating their own games using math. Uh, actually, I have been involved in some such projects, uh, and but I, I think it's 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 more like it's it you you could not uh, you could not really ex you know exchange those. I I think this is because it's also like we really want to make give an input to the kids, the kids who struggle, who do not have the basics for number sense. And they can't find that out themselves. So, I mean, here there's lots and lots of preschool research, early math expertise that goes into the game. So, you know, what is it that is difficult? What, 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 how, how do you, can you train that? But of course, in a way, I think they, they still feel that they do, they, they have, I mean, they have the garden where they, arrange the flowers, the, the things, there is some creative aspect of it still, but of course, sure, it's not a game that the kids, they don't create this game. However, they create a lot of stuff outside of the iPad. We see that they tend to take the characters, the environment out and they, so they create games inspired by the this game, the digital game, they take that outside and, you know, engage in creative game design, you would say. Yeah, so, okay, the, uh, thank you. Of course, the, I do not work with preschool uh, students, but I, um, I guess that would be a very good challenge involving them in the process of co-creation of those ga games. I think mm -hmm. that then we can exchange yes yes about. and they have been they have been involved now when i think about it your yeah. question they have been involved some of them have been involved because we have been developing this for more than 10 years so it's an iterative and we have had preschool kids you know bringing in their ideas now we're going to make a new sub game what do you think 
what kinds of characters. So in a way, we have had we have had participation from the children, also while we have developed the game. Thank you.